There is always light if we are brave enough to see it, if we are brave enough to be it. Some of you remember these words of the young American poetess Amanda Gorman. She was speaking in front of the US Capitol on January 20th. Well, today I think that these words are addressed to each one of us, to each one of us. They remind us of our personal responsibilities. Dear ambassadors, dear colleagues, dear Deputy Secretary General, Mr. Stern, thank you all for being here today to mark the International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Notwithstanding COVID, we are all together here to pay respect to the millions of victims of the Holocaust and to remember them, but also to remember to ourselves that the sleep of reason generated unspeakable atrocities not long time ago. We will not sleep. We can be sentinels and be the light of bravery. This is the very reason of the foundation of our alliance, an unique alliance in the history of mankind, not a temporary coalition against someone, but a permanent alliance, the most successful in history, for something, for our values. I am grateful to my Polish colleague, Ambassador Szatkowski, to have joined us in this initiative of collective reflection. Poland and its Jewish citizens has been one of the countries that has suffered the most from the horror of war and of the Holocaust. And indeed, today we are also commemorating the 76th anniversary of the liberation of the Nazi concentration camp of Auschwitz-Birkenau. Also, many thanks to you, dear Mircea, for being with us again. The message that I would like to deliver today is simple and draws on the words of Amanda Gorman, on our own responsibility to be that light, our own responsibility to be brave enough to decide to do the right thing every single day. We, as diplomats, we, as soldiers, can make the difference. Thousands of Jews have been saved because of the bravery of diplomats and soldiers who took responsibility in terrible times. Diplomats who used, issued visas for lives, who acted to save Jews as several Italian soldiers have done in the occupied territories. The Japanese Sugiara, the Portuguese Aristides de Sousa Mendes, the Italian Perlasca who pretended to be a Spanish diplomat in Budapest, and in Budapest, the Swedish Wallenberg, and then the king of the Danish, peop the king of the Danish people who saved the thousands of Jews, all its Jewish citizens, and the, all the Albanian people. In Albania, they were all saved. The future Pope John XXIII, Giovanni Roncalli in Turkey, and the Greek Archbishop Damaskinos, and Bulgaria, who refused to deport 50,000 Jews. During the Shoah, many diplomats and militaries have proved responsible and brave enough to do the right thing and opposed to the horrific atrocities that were pre perpetrated against the Jewish people of many nationalities. If we will be able to do so, then we can have hope in the future. In this sense, Italy carries a special burden of responsibility. And this is precisely the reason why I deem it so important for us to promote this commemoration ceremony. Besides, this year's commemoration has also a special meaning for my country because 2021 marks the 20th anniversary since the Remembrance Day has been sanctioned by a formal law the first of this kind, of July 2000 in Italy as a national day for mourning. It means that everywhere, from the palace of the president at the Quirinal, to a small city hall in Sardinia, from the Capitol Hill in Rome, to the elementary school in, in, on, in the Alps, from our consulate general in New York to the headquarters of NATO, our Italian flag must be half mast. We must remember. We remember, but this is not, never enough. And in this everyday struggle, 
art can be of help. Even in the most tragic moment, art has been an inspiration toward the best part of our souls. For these reasons, I am particularly grateful to the World Jewish Congress for making this initiative possible and to its executive vice president, Mr. Maramstern, to be with us today. My thoughts are also with the curator of this meaningful art installation, Dandelions, Armano Tedeschi, and with the artist who created it, uh, Carla Chiusano. We see her image now. Uh, also, many thanks to the Auschwitz Museum for lending this touching exhibit, the Auschwitz experience in the art of prisoners. In the context of an alliance of democracies, as we are, based on fundamental values such as individual liberty and the rule of law, we must join the global effort aimed at cultivating our common memory. And this is especially true in these times where autocracy appears to be in the, on the march. Well, we as an alliance can prove that democracy is still on the march with our daily example and leading by the power of it. Before leaving the floor to you, Tomas, I would like to recall two Italians, two survivors, one we see now on the screen. Uh, they are, have a special meaning for me personally. Sami Modiano, a true living example of resilience, a word that we've come to know very well in the last months, faced as we are with the pandemic. I visited Auschwitz-Birkenau on a cold January day several years ago in one of the many visits organized for Italian schools. I will never forget. He dedicated much of his life to the painful duty of memory in order to be a witness of what he lived. Now, as his generation is passing away, I have this duty, to be the witness of the witness. And I remember another heroic survivor and witness, life senator Liliana Segre, that has so elo eloquently addressed the European Parliament last year, recalling us of the need to fulfill our own responsibilities, to live up to the highest expectations. Let's be the light for a better future, a dandelion of hope in the true spirit of our alliance. We remember, we are NATO. Mr. Deputy Secretary General. Uh, Thomas, yes, sorry. Okay. Dear Ambassadors, Deputy Secretary General, Mr. Stern, colleagues. Uh, first, I would like to thank my dear colleague, uh, Ambassador Talo Francesco. Thank you very much for your initiative, your wise and courageous words, and for agreeing. Um, um, for my delegation to be part of this um, uh, ceremony, because it leads, meets, means to me, indeed, as a Pole, to stand here in front of you and pay tribute to the millions of victims of the Holocaust. As you know, my country was exceptionally affected by the deadliest conflict in the world's history and by its consequ consequences that left Europe divided for almost half of a century. A country that r first resisted the Nazi Third Reich paid a great price for its defiance. During the five atrocious years of the Nazi German occupation, six million Polish citizens died. As many as three million of those were Polish Jews, 90% of the pre-war population. And yet this horror was magnified and brought to another dimension by the decision of the Nazi Third Reich to conduct its most barbaric and unhuman crime against the entire European Jewry on the territory of occupied Poland. After the war, there has been a wide understanding, and it's still today, that we are called to keep the memory of the atrocities during the World War II. Preserving for the next generations the memory and the truth about the Holocaust, its victims and perpetrators, without watching down and without the political correctness, is the only way to prevent it from happening again. Holocaust is hard to describe and hard to understand. Orchestrated and meticulously planned like an industrial plan, mass annihilation of European Jews wasn't like anything the world knew. 
The Nazis exploited the lowest instincts of their and occupied people to execute their plans, but policy of spoliation, degradation, and extermination of the Jews was rooted in racist and anti-Semitic ideology propagated and directed by the Third Reich, and forced by its ruthless apparatus. International Holocaust Remembrance Day marks the anniversary, this year it is 76th, of liberation of the Auschwitz camp. It was initially set up by the occupants to inconcentrate and exterminate the Polish patriots, but then in 1942 it primarily became the most no notable epicenter of the extermination of Jews. It was the largest of the concentration camps ex complexes created by, by the Nazi German regime and was the one which combined extermination with forced labor and other forms of um, uh, killing. Um, first and foremost, the gas chambers brought about a death toll of more than one million Jews in the single complex. Most of them executed upon arrival in most unhuman way. Among other nationalities, except of my compatriots, tens of thousands of Roma, Sinti, Soviet prisoners of war, and many others were also brutally killed there. Auschwitz was liberated on January 27, 1945 by the Soviet soldiers. Although they did not bring an actual freedom to my country, the sacrifice of simple soldiers helped bring about the Allied victory over Nazi regime, which ended the war and stopped the mass killing and unbearable suffering. Already in 1946, when the camp was transferred by the NKVD to the Polish authorities, it was converted into a place of eternal commemoration. The UNESCO recognized it as a former a German Nazi concentration and extermination camp Auschwitz-Birkenau and put it on the list of the world uh, heritage. Thinking about the liberation of Auschwitz, we should not forget of those brave individuals who tried to stop the deadly machine of Holocaust. Uh, the number of 27,072 righteous among the nations from 51 countries recognized by the Yad Vashem in Jerusalem certainly does not represent the entirety and here I wanted to use this occasion to, to, to um, bring up um, stories of silent heroes like uh, those I have come uh, myself across, um, simple people who risk, risk everything to help others. In my country, the punishment by the Nazi occup occupants for helping the Jews became, in the course of the war, as severe as executing the entire families of those who dared to help. And yet many of those brave people never cared about being rewarded or recognized after the war. Let me share one such story I know from family relations. Stanisław and Janina Błażejczyk from the area of Zelechów in central eastern Poland were a family of simple Yemen and shoemakers. They sheltered in a barn and fed a young Jewish couple, Josek and Jaime Pnine, and helped feed their friends. For two years, right under the noses of Gestapo and Feld Gendarmerie patrols and under a fear of being snitched due to cruel intimidation or bribery. When they had understandable moments of hesitation, their children helped maintain the belief that, that this is just the right thing to do. When in 2000s, the family of the Jews who survived thanks to them wanted to recognize their act of selfless heroism and charity, they had already passed away. Such heroes and many others whose name will, will never uh, be known are the ones thanks to whom we can keep our faith in, in the humanity. I would like to thank the Auschwitz Museum for providing th this exhibition with the art represent uh, representation of inmates' experience. It is not easy to digest, but the art is probably the best medium, much better than words, to express the indescribable suffering and pain of the victims of Holocaust and of other forms of the racial hatred. The painful truth about the Holocaust must not die. We should make every effort to educate the next generations about the past so that it doesn't repeat itself. As we stand here as NATO members, as nations and as humans, we build responsibility not to let it happen again, never again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Talot, Ambassador Shatkovsky, the Ambassadors, dear Mr. Maram Stern, Executive Vice President of the American Jewish Committee, Congress, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 
everyone. As we commemorate the International Holocaust Remembrance Day, not only the Italian flag, but all our nations, our allied nations' flags are half mast today, as they should be in such a day of remembrance, of significance, and impact to who we are and what we represent. On this day, 76 years ago, the Red Army liberated Auschwitz and the 7,000 people who had managed to survive the death camp. Other camps, such as the Dachau and Buchenwald, were later liberated by the United States and Bergen Belsen by the United Kingdom. We remember the horrendous atrocities of the Holocaust and of all of the Nazi concentration camps, where millions of Jews, Roma, homosexuals, people with disabilities, and many others suffered and died in the most inhumane conditions imaginable. The paintings and drawings of Auschwitz prisoners here before us are a stark reminder of what once was and must never again be. We also remember the hope and solidarity that were born out of those darkest days the hope for a better and safer world, a world where hatred and anti-Semitism have no place, and where people from different nationalities, backgrounds, and religions can defend human dignity for all, and safeguard fundamental values, such as the right to life, to justice, and to freedom. NATO, our NATO, was created to uphold these values. It is our duty to protect them against those trying to undermine our way of life. And it is the responsibility of each and every one of us to respect and live up to those values. We owe it to the millions who suffered and died in concentration camps. We owe it to ourselves and to the next generations. Never again. The theme of this year's Remembrance Days is recovery and reconstitution after the Holocaust. And thank you so much to everyone who has contributed to this perseverant and meaningful effort. A theme that holds many lessons for us also today, at a time when our societies strive to recover from a global pandemic an attempt to reconstitute amidst uncertainty and unpredictability. You cannot compare, of course, the Holocaust to this pandemic or to any other challenge for that matter. But there are some similar lessons to be learned. One important lesson to be learned is on truth. Because the first step to recovery is to acknowledge what truly happened and counter attempts to deny and distort events. To this day, some still deny the Holocaust or interpret history in their own twisted way. Sadly, disinformation, propaganda, and hate speech are used every day to try to disrupt, divide, and diminish us as individuals and as democracies. We must always be vigilant and continue to fight false narratives using facts and credible information because ultimately the truth will prevail. But perhaps the greatest lesson of all is one of friendship and cooperation. We do not recover and reconstitute alone. We do it together, joining forces. When recalling the story of when she nearly died of hunger and exhaustion in Auschwitz, Dr. Edith Eger, a 93-year-old survivor, 
talks about those who came to her rescue. And I quote, all we had was each other then, she says, and all we have is each other now. We all stand stronger when we stand with each other. And this is the very essence of NATO. Standing together as NATO allies and with our partners to overcome any challenge together. Dear ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, I know the challenges of putting together an in-person event in these COVID-19 times, so I'm truly grateful to all of those who have made this event possible, to the Italian delegation that has taken this cause on a permanent basis, to our Polish colleagues and delegation, to the artists and curators, Ms. Carla Cusano and Mr. Hermano Tedeschi, and as I mentioned, the World Jewish Congress and our NATO staff. I echo Ambassador Tallo in thanking the Auschwitz Museum for this touching exhibit. With this artwork, we are privileged to have in the Agora, we remember the Holocaust and remember who we are, what we stand for in this great alliance of ours. And thank you so very much. And thank you for fighting. And we'll have to continue to fight the fight of defending our values, freedom, human dignity, solidarity, every single day. Thank you very much and enjoy this incredibly powerful exhibition that we have here amongst us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General. Thanks indeed to all the NATO staff who was precious and indispensable to realize this today. Now, uh, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I kindly invite you, row by row, to take a flower. They are dandelions. And uh, lay down it at the base of the art installation dandelion and the, the art installation, which is called dandelion. And then get back to your position for a final family photo with um, the hashtag we remember sign. Let us join uh, the World Jewish Congress Global Campaign for the International Holocaust Day. Let's remember what happened in the unique uh, show uh, experience of our history and the fact that anti-Semitism is still a terrible reality we have to fight against. So please. Uh,